Today we're taking a look at the Athen Genesis SD70 M-2 from Canadian National and this is in their 25th anniversary of its IPO livery. Starting here from the front, we got the number boards, 8898, marker lights, the windshield wipers, which actually are connected here with a bar on top. Inside, there's a camera for the event recorder. We've got a ladder on the right-hand side, some grab irons, CN logo, some stanchions with some dish lights at the bottom, a nose-mounted headlight. Then we have this first aid kit symbol here, says it has a stretcher inside and tools. There also is this hidden door on the left-hand side. Then we have the anti-climber painted yellow and an MU cable, which is actually leaning off to the right-hand side. Then we have a couple of cut levers, some airline hoses and your standard McHenry coupler and here's what it looks like dead on now a cool thing about Canadian locomotives their labels are bilingual with both English and French on the side here we have some steps painted in yellow a warning label and a walkway light and we got the F4 front and there's also a decal on the side of the nose say CN25 with both the Canadian and the American flag then over here we have a line for the isolated cab the side cab windows and a sunshade on top there's also two wind deflectors also used as a side view mirror and here we have the locomotive type sd70 m-2 a side vent and some molded on detail so now let's take a look at the bogey here we got two suspension springs and a jacking pad and you can also see the molded on detail it says hgc r4 which is the type of truck it is moving down behind the cab we have the inverter cabinet and to the side there's a large vent and there's this cool white stripe to divide up the colors here's a closer view of the warning label and there's also holes on the sides. On top we have an air filter and some treading for the walkway on top, window for the back of the cab, and there's a grab iron ladder painted in red. There also is this extruded panel and at the bottom you see this pipe that goes across and in the middle we have the fuel gauge and the fuel filler cap. It also says caburant in French which means fuel. Then we have the fuel cutoff switch. Now it's actually missing its red box color which if you look at the real one it does exist although they did it correctly on the GT version. Then we have this white painted L section of the railing right here. Pretty cool detail. Then we have the iconic CN logo, it looks nice and modern. And actually checked out their website and they do have a long head forward train, which is an interesting picture choice. On the top we have some warning labels and you can see the molded on detail for the doors. In the back we have the radiator section. Down below we have some more caution label warnings. Then we have some grills here on the sides, some vents, and the rear one is see-through. Now here's what it looks like in the back. We've got a mini CN logo at the top, some marker lights, a headlight, and some grills in the middle. A ladder on the left hand side and some rear ditch lights. Here we got the road numbers, the MU cable, spare knuckle coupler holders, and a small rock plow at the bottom. Alright, so now let's go check out the other side. An interesting thing is the steps actually go from narrow to wide towards the bottom. On this side we have the handbrake wheel as well as some more warning labels, a fire extinguisher symbol, and down the bottom there is an air dryer. Then we have the CN logo yet again, down the bottom the air reservoir tanks, and the fuel tank detail. So on the engineer's side, the walk up goes up over here because there's a battery box, or steps to get up to the cab where they do have a windshield wiper on this door. There are also two additional doors which have door handles. So in this corner of the underframe you can see there's an air filter and an e-bill. On this side we have an engineer side mirror which is hanging quite low. On the side of the nose we have the IPO 25 decal to mark the 25th anniversary of privatization and these colors are probably previous railroads. There's also this triangle bit which is not present on the other side. All right, so now let's go check out the roof. So if you look at it from above, you can see the anti-climber segment. It has some shredding, while the middle part is kind of blank, and the steps are see-through etched metal. On top of the nose, we have the sand filler hatches and grab irons in the middle and the sides. You can also see the cab roof is specially painted in white for IPO25. Usually CN locomotives have a black cab roof. We also got this GPS antenna dome. So like other Athen locomotives, the cab roof is detachable. There are two magnetic connections to connect to the inside of this. So it does have an interior painted mostly in brown. And there's a wire in the middle to connect to the headlights. You can see the engineer side controls. Definitely a cool feature if you want to add in some figures inside. Behind the cab, we have these three stripes, some molded on detail, the exhaust hole. Throughout the body, there's a lot of these small, tiny lifting rings. Then we got the K5 LLA horn on this rounded out middle section. Now in the back, we got the two radiator fans. These fan grills are see-through. Then in the very back, we have the dynamic brake fan and this grab iron, which I never noticed, but it has an angle on it and a sand filler hatch. So as always, I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the bottom, just in case you're wondering what it looks like. There is a bit of lubrication on it though.
Now let's compare it to my BNSF SD70 ACE. Now this is the closest locomotive I have to the SD70 M-2. There are some differences, like the CN has the marker lights, as well as the MU cable is slanted onto one side, while BNSF is more centered. So the main way you can tell the difference between them is the inverter cabinet. There's three doors on the side of the M-2, while the ACE has two long vents here, and this is the most recognizable characteristic. And the reason why they're different is because the ACE runs on AC power, while the M-2 uses DC power on their traction motors. They also have different styles for their sunshades. The CN is kind of small while the BNSF is longer and wide and the cabin antennas are different. The CNs is a bit of an older design. You can see in the back they are similar in that they have two radiator fans and a dynamic brake fan but the way to design the side grills are going to be different and same thing goes for the rear grills. Now the CN has a lot of details like the marker lights, the dish lights, the rock plow which are not present in BNSF. Now we're to go across the other side. You see side by side comparison, they look really similar. Now, if you watch the beginning of the video, you'll notice these walkways were actually unglued from the sill. And the reason why is because these are actually metal pieces that are separately applied, which do look cool. Although I did have to glue them back. You see the BNSF, it's kind of normal. The placement of the side view mirror is also different. On the CN, it's quite low. On BNSF, it lines up with the cab window. And I was thinking, oh shoot, did Ather mess up on this? But it turns out, yeah, it's actually like that in real life. Now, compare it with Canadian Pacific, my other Canadian locomotive. Their reds are a different hue. The CP is slightly richer and darker in color. They also both have this green first aid kit symbols on the nose, so this must be a Canadian thing. Now here are all the class 1 railroads that I have. These are the major railroads of the US. From the west coast, we have BNSF and Union Pacific. Then from Canada, we have Canadian Pacific and Canadian National. And then the east coast, we have Norfolk Southern and CSX. I feel like Thanos collecting the Infinity Stones. We have every single class 1 railroad road except for KCS.
So for my final thoughts, the reason why I got this locomotive is because a lot of you guys have asked for Canadian National locomotive. The SD70 M-2 is iconic for Canadian National since they own the most M-2s. There's a lot of unique details like the marker lights which actually do light up going backwards, the inverter cabinet, the rear rock plow, the etched metal walkways, the MU cables leaning to one side, labels written in French, etc. Now the cons. This model is very well detailed, however the execution is a bit sloppy. First the walkways came out of the package unglued so I have to glue it myself. At first I tried to use Tamiya super thin cement but that didn't seem to last. So then I used CA super glue. Now gluing these are a bit tricky since the metal wants to spring up so I had to hold it down so I decided hey what if I use the foam pads to help hold it down in place but that turned out to be a bad idea because it's flexible a bit of glue got stuck to it so now I have some foam on the walkway. So I later used an aloe wrench as a weight which is perfect for this and I would recommend you use this if you come across this situation just to hold it down. Skill trains also did make a video of it so I guess Atherin's not the only one with this issue, it's just Canadian National. Another issue I came across was the paint they use for the step up handrails are quite thin or the paint's just missing so it's just red. Also one side's windshield is sticking out farther than it should be outside the gasket and this is how it normally should look like. There's also a scratch on the inverter cabinet, the corner of the IPO25 decal is shipped, and the inaccurate missing red paint for the fuel cutoff switch. They also have a black line on the anti-climber which at first I thought was a mistake but it turned out to be an actual detail on the real one so at least props for them for that. In conclusion I think it's a good locomotive to get though I do wish they did a better job on quality control. If they did it would be a great locomotive and I got this model from LombardHobby.com. But yeah that's pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do make sure you hit that like button down below, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.